This is Rosen section 9.6 on partial orderings. And here's our section summary. Our partial orderings are a type of relation on a set, and we'll define it here. A partial ordering is if you have a relation R on a set S, that is from S to S. We say that it's a partial order if it's reflexive, anti-symmetric, and transitive. So if it has those three properties, it's a partial ordering. <clears throat> and we have a shorthand term for it. If you have a set together with the partial ordering, it's called a partially ordered set or a post set. And we usually give the, the set first and then the, the relation in a two-tuple, an ordered pair. Okay. Let's look at an example. I want to show that the greater than or equal to relation is a partial ordering on the set of integers. So it's got to have those three properties. Look at reflexivity first. Well, A is less than or equal to itself for every integer A. So it is reflexive. Anti-symmetry. Remember the definition. If A is less than or equal to B and B is, excuse me, if A is greater than or equal to B and B is greater than or equal to A, then A equals B. Uh, it's true for this relation. And finally, transitivity. A greater than or equal to B, B greater than or equal to C implies A greater than or equal to C. That's all true. So um, this would be a post set or a partial ordering on the set of integers. These follow from the axioms on the integers. You can look at Appendix 1 for those. Let's look at another example. The divisibility relation. So the divisibility relation is written like this. A divides B if and only if A divides B. That is that B is a multiple of A. Okay. Here on the set of positive integers again. Is it reflexive? Yes, for the positive integers, every integer, every positive integer divides itself. So it is reflexive. Anti-symmetric. If A divides B and B divides A, then A must equal B. And then transitivity, we have A divides B <clears throat> and B divides C. That means B is a multiple of A. Right? And then C is a multiple of B. If I substitute a k in for B, I get C is a multiple of A. So A divides C. So it is transitive. All right, let's look at one more. Oh, and the way we write this is uh, positive integers and then the divides relation. Okay, so now the, um, the relation is the inclusion relation, that is the subset relation. And we're going to be looking at the power set of a set S, that is all the possible subsets of S. And is it reflexive? Well, yes, because every element is a subset of itself. Anti-symmetric, A subset of B and B subset of A implies A equals B. That's from the definition of set equality. And transitivity, yes, if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A must be a subset of C. So all of these follow from set inclusion. Chapter two. All right, I want to talk about the concept of comparability or comparability, either way is fine. 
I'm going to talk about this relation here, and it stands for any type of partial ordering relation. I'm going to call, I'm going to use the phrase earlier than or same as. You can tell it looks a little bit like the less than or equal to uh, sign, but it's kind of curvy. So A and B are elements of a poset S with the earlier than or the same as relation. They're comparable, those two elements, if either A is earlier than or the same as B, or B is earlier than or the same as A. When neither of those statements is allowed, then we say that A and B are incomparable. We cannot compare them. And this symbol does carry that concept of the same as or equality. Whereas that symbol without that lower line would be strict ordering without the possibility of equality. Okay, um, that's comparability. Let's look at another concept. If I have a post set S with the earlier than or the same as relation, and every two elements are comparable, then we call S a totally ordered or linearly ordered set. Okay. And then another definition. If I have S and the earlier than or the same as relation, and it is a total ordering, then we say it is well ordered if every non-empty subset of S has a least element, according to the relation. So talk about some examples. This first example is the integers with the less than or equal to relation. In the integers, every two elements are comparable under the less than or equal to relation. So it would be a totally ordered set. I'll put a T there. But it does not have the property that every non-empty subset has a least element. What if I take the subset of the negative integers? Well, there's no least element in the set of negative integers. So I'm going to put a W here and an X through it because it is not a well-ordered set. All right, for Z plus with the divides relation, um, not every pair of integers is comparable. Uh, two prime numbers, for instance, would one would not be divisible by the other or vice versa. So it is not a totally ordered set. For the power set of S under the uh, inclusion relation, it is also not a totally ordered set because if you have a set containing a single element and another set containing a different single element, those are both subsets of S, but they're not comparable. Neither is a subset of the other. This is not a totally ordered set. For Z plus, um, it will be a totally ordered set because ever, under the less than or equal to relation, it will be a totally ordered set. And since it we're restricting to the positive integers, it is also a well-ordered set because every non-empty subset of Z plus will have a least element under this relation.